Hi, I'm Wendy with H2O Bungalow. Today I'm going to share with you how to build a DIY faux chimney with Airstone. You can download my instructions and the supply list in my blog post at h2obungalow.com. Search faux chimney. There's also a link to my post in this video description as well. To design your chimney size, measure the ceiling height on both sides of your fireplace, the front and the back. Ceilings are not always level, especially in older homes. You'll also need to measure how deep and how wide you'd like your chimney to be. Because you'll be attaching your frame to the studs in the wall, you'll need to locate and mark where they're located. When designing the size of your frame, keep in mind the air stones are about an inch thick and the hardy backer is a quarter inch thick. I built and attached the back of the frame to the studs in the wall and then attached the front of the frame. Your frame size will probably be different, but here's my cut list as an example. Again, remember you can download the instructions on the blog. I cut the four corners, four crossbars, and six sides first. Be sure to mark each one as you cut them. I added two pocket holes to each of the six sides on one end. Just attach them at the top, middle, and bottom of a corner piece with two inch pocket screws. These are the frame pieces that will attach to the wall. Next, I added two pocket holes at each end of the four center crossbars and the other two vertical supports. I assembled my frame in place because our ceiling was so uneven that I didn't think I'd be able to fit it on top of the fireplace hole. I used two inch pocket screws to assemble the frame. If you're working alone, attaching the top piece is easy if you brace one end up while securing the screws to the other end. I leaned an extra two by three against the wall to support the far side. Next, I centered the frame and attached it to the studs in the wall using three inch spax bolts. I attached the front of corners of the frame next. I used two three inch wood screws at each sidebar location. Last, I added the front crossbars and then the vertical supports spaced evenly across the center. They're attached with two pocket screws at the top and bottom. Here's a side note. I wish I'd have added a center vertical support or even two in the middle so when I wanted to hang heavy pictures, there'd be something for a screw to grip on. Now you're ready to cut and attach the hardy backer. I used two three by five foot sheets. You'll measure the panels and score it with a utility knife about four times, pressing down firmly. and snap it at the seam over a table edge. Mark your panel pieces so you know where they go. You'll attach the hardy backer board with one and a quarter inch backer on screws all around the frame. I had one panel that I had to piece together, but it wasn't an issue and the seams laid flat. Now you're ready to apply the stone. Protect your area with drop cloths. The air stone comes wrapped in plastic and bubble wrap. There's about three color variations and a variety of size stones in each box. The corners look like this. Each row is a matching corner set, so do not separate them. First, you'll separate the flat stone colors into piles so it's easy to pull from different ones when you're placing the air stones on the wall. You'll lay out the corner sections as well and grab the airstone adhesive and a putty knife. I used the interior airstone adhesive for this project. You'll apply the adhesive with a putty knife and lay it on about as thick as you would when you're icing a cake. You'll start with the corners first. You'll alternate the seams on the corners, one facing forward, and on the next row, the seam will face to the side.
Press the air stone firmly onto the hardy backer board and wipe off the extra adhesive that seeps out from the sides or the top of the stones. Continue placing stones up the sides mixing colors and shapes of the corner pieces but keeping the sets together. Use a damp, clean rag to wipe off the excess glue. You'll need to cut stones to fit as you place rows. You can either cut and place stones in a single row or wait and fit end pieces from the leftover scrap stones, which is what I did. It was easier to lay out a full row at a time and then attach the stones all at once. To cut the stones, you'll measure the size first. You can use a hacksaw to cut air stone, but since I had so many stones to cut, I used a grinder with a diamond cutting wheel and a bar clamp to hold the stone while cutting. You must use safety goggles and a face mask for this step. Position your grinder so the dust flies away from you and cut from the front of the stone. Continue laying stones in sections or in rows. It's your preference. You'll find some double high stones. Try to mix these in randomly. They will add a lot of character. You also might need to shave the top of a stone every now and then at times just to get it to fit. The air stone adhesive sets pretty quickly, so you won't be able to move stones soon after you've placed them. But the open container of adhesive was fine all day while I worked, and it didn't harden or skim over. I didn't have enough space at the ceiling to add a row or cut down stones for a small row. I'll probably either add grout later or trim it with a quarter round. Again, you can download the complete set of instructions and my supply list in my blog post at h2obungalow.com. Search Faux Chimney. There's also a link in the description of this video on YouTube. I hope you liked my project. If you did, like this post, leave me a comment, and subscribe to me on YouTube. You can subscribe to my blog as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next creative DIY project.